If you are an architect or a developer and you are trying to design and build an event-driven application, then you must know about event sourcing and secure as architecture patterns. Nowadays, the popularity for these two architecture patterns is increasing because of different needs in organization to build event-driven applications. So as a developer or an architect, you must know about event sourcing and secure as architecture patterns so that you won't be an outdated architect or a developer in your organization. So stay tuned until the end of this video if you don't want to be like that. Building applications in combination of a CQRS and event sourcing architecture patterns, there are a number of advantages in building event-based systems. In this video, we discuss about how these two architecture patterns complement each other in building an efficient event-driven application. And also, we'll deep dive into the principles of these two architecture patterns. Before getting into the session, first let us look at the agenda. Initially, we see how we use it to build applications following the traditional architecture patterns and what is event sourcing and its advantages and we'll come to know about the CQRS and its principles and its advantages as well. And finally, we'll look at how we can build event-driven applications using CQRS and event sourcing architecture principles. If you are building applications at least since 2006 or later, then you are familiar with this kind of entire architecture. Or if you are just out of college, you might have studied about this kind of architecture in your academic works. This is entire architecture with the presentation layer or view layer. And so far rest endpoint on top of business logic layer. Then we have data access layer and finally, we have a database layer with some traditional RDBMS system. And also, we have data model for each layer. This architecture is very normal and makes sense to build any enterprise level applications. If you look at the characteristics of entire architecture, we use the same stack of layers for write and read operations. We use same SOAP REST endpoint and business logic layer DOA layer for writing and reading the data from one database. And also, we use same data model for business logic processing, reading and writing the data. Going further, we'll come to know how bad idea it is. And also, we use coarse grind deployment units that combine read and write code. So, what are the package or deployment unit that we build? will have the write components as well as read components as a single unit and we used to deploy this application like you know jar or var or er enterprise archive file and we make it as a one unit and we use it to deploy time deployment units on heavyweight application servers like weblogic and websphere the fourth characteristic is we change data sets directly if we want to change specific column value in a row, we directly change the value and commit. After the commit, the old value has gone. You never know what is the old value from application perspective. Of course, you can find the old value from database transaction logs, but when it comes to application perspective, you cannot get the old value. Yes, we have built so many applications using this architecture for the last two decades. And we have proven successful and everything was smooth and fine with this architecture. Definitely this approach was not a crap since we had very good reasons for writing softwares using this approach. But there are some drawbacks to build systems for different use cases by following this entire architecture. We look at those drawbacks. Let's take a look at what are the problems with this architecture. Look at data model. It is compromised one. We compromised on business logic processing, writing and reading the data. If you look at reading component, it is completely dependent on database views or persistent views in order to improve the performance of the application. That is, application performance depends on the data storage. In the end, we use same data model for reading and writing from the same data storage. And also, we cannot scale read and write components independently. 
because we deployed these two components together as a single deployment unit. For example, if an application is consuming more system resources to read, say 90% of CPU and only 10% per write operations. If you want to scale out read part independently, we cannot do it. We have to do it at entire application level, even if it is not necessary. The third one is no data history, no snapshots, no replay. If I make a change or update a value in a table, the old value has gone once you are committed the transaction. So there is no history. I can't go just roll back the application and cannot ask the state of the application from yesterday at a specific time. You don't have the history of the state of your application. And the third one, this approach forces us to build a big monolithic application. Obviously, we try to deploy all components together as a very coarse grind deployment unit, which causes to build very big monolithic application. To address these all problems, there is an architecture that is event sourcing. This is an architecture pattern that represents the state of the application as a series of events. In this pattern, we just don't have a state store as a relation database. Actually, the state is being computed by sequence of certain events. Event sourcing is not a new architectural pattern. It is there since a long time. If you order a pizza from a McDonald's, what is the life cycle of this particular event from the business domain perspective? If you really look at the nature of this business domain, these are all events, you know, like uh, order is created, order is paid, order is prepared, and finally, order is delivered. These all are events. It's a series of events. In event sourcing design pattern, we'll have the following building blocks. We have applications, event queue, event handler, and finally, the event store. Applications writes the events to the event queue and event handler receives these events and maybe it may validate the events and validate the business logic and once it is done its job, finally the events will be stored in the event store. The sequence of events that are passed through the event queue to the event storage is called as event stream. So we have constant stream of events from application to event storage for a best example for event stream you know you can say like uh, if you order a chicken burger from mcdonald's so event is created like order created event it may have the other number and other date and item chicken burger status as open so once your order is paid so there will be another event called order payment done event the status might be paid the event status has been changed so once order payment has been done so order shipped event will be created so because the, once the payment has been done from the customers order should be shipped so definitely there will be an insert statement to insert all these events into the event store the most important thing that we need to look at here is every event is that is something happened in the past it's not going to be happen so event is something that has happened in the past so we should always name the events explicitly in past tense the names of the events are part of the ubiquitous language of domain driven design for example you can see the code example in this screen we have order created event so which is explicitly telling that this event something happened in the past that is order created event and we can say even another example like order shipment done, order payment done. So all these events are explicitly telling that this event was happened in the past. And also an event is always immutable. Once the event is created, that cannot be changed. So there is no deletion of events. And a delete operation is also is an, another event. So whenever something new event is happened, and if you want to delete something from database, we should not delete. The deletion operation should be another event. There won't be any change in the existing event. So we should mark the delete event as an order shipped deleted event. 
some exceptional cases like GDPR compliance, that is the General Data Protection Regulatory, so which the government forces the organizations to delete the customer data or something. In that case, we can delete the data as per the regulatory rules and laws. Otherwise, we are not going to delete any data from our event store. So if you want to delete something, we mark it as a de deleted event. How we should fine grain the entities because we found so many entities in present systems. We feel very hard to fine grain the entities in business domain. So what domain driven design says, scope your events based on aggregates. Aggregates are nothing but group of collection of entities bounded to specific business context. So we have to collect all the events based on the aggregates. Usually we must have one root entity for any business context, you know. So this root entity is responsible for life cycle of object graph. Actually, the event bus is implemented by a message broker so that you can use ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ as your event bus because uh, they are very easy to scale and integrate and easy to maintain. An important point here, at any cost, don't try to use enterprise service bus as your event bus because they exist in every organization and most of the organizations adopted this ISBs, enterprise service buses because of uh, service oriented architecture adaptation. So the project managers, they want to reduce the costs in the project and they will try to push technical people. Why can't we reuse the enterprise service bus as event bus? But at any cost, don't agree with them because the experts of event driven architectures say that they have already used enterprise service bus as their event bus and they have faced so many practical issues. They suggest at any cost don't use enterprise service bus as your event bus. Let us discuss what are the advantages of event sourcing. If you follow the event sourcing principles, we get the ability to rebuild a certain state of an application at free of cost. We no need to do any code change or no need to put extra efforts to build the specific state of an application. For example, if anybody from the business team wants to know the business status from the first quarter of year 2018, it is possible. Simply we can take the data sets from that particular period from the event store and we can replay them and we can get exact status or state of business how it was in the first quarter of 2018. Temporal queries. It means you can have the capability to do temporal queries. If you want to know how the customer aggregates looks like on a specific date like January 9th year 2018 at 2 o'clock, still you can do and you can query the specific aggregate with event sourcing. This is very useful in audit trials it is easy to know when and what happened with specific piece of data. Event replay. It is useful when debugging or finding any specific business logic uh, bug. You can go ahead and rebuild the data set with specific time when the bug was reported. By replaying the event by event, we can trace out the root cause of that specific bug and what are the reasons or what is the problem with the, any code. We can find it easily. Not but not least, we have uh, an event store has a high business value. No surprise in that because we store each and every incident that is happening with business as an event in our event store. You can get the deeper insights in your business with these events. You can discover new analytics on your business domain behavior. For example, if your organization has a web, web store and you are selling some products, if you want to know what are the products that will be sold in specific month like uh, in December because of Christmas season people buy specific products you can easily predict what products mostly to be purchased by customer by applying the analytics on this event data from previous year and you can easily predict what are the products that can be bought by the customers from your web store so all these events we have in our event store so we can just replay those events and we can analyze so what are the products that were sold in the last year so we can easily predict that on how those products will be sold in the present year as well 
Yeah, there is a disadvantage of event sourcing architecture. Whatever the system we have discussed so far is terrible in performance. Because of temporal queries against event store, we have to query each and every event and replay the event in order to get the current state of the application. So without doubt, it is horrible in performance. To address this kind of performance issues and to complement event sourcing architecture, the CQRS architecture pattern came into the picture. CQRS means Command Query Responsibility Segregation. I want to end this video here and would like to discuss more about the CQRS pattern and its principles and also how CQRS solves the problem that we have with uh, event sourcing, especially the performance issue. So I would like to discuss all this stuff in the next video. Yeah, to go to the next part of this video, please click on the link showing above or you can find the link in the description. If you like this video, like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Catch you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.